Welcome back. Well, today we have a continuation of a previous Bedford Antiques shopping trip. And uh, the prices of these items ranged from ridiculously low, I think our lowest priced item was $1.40, up to eight fifty five, which is still below that ten dollar threshold, which basically says thrift store prices to me, and even that eight fifty five piece is one that well, I just have my eye on it, so when we come back, we're going to take a look at what I picked up, and we're going to talk about them. First up is a little booth that I go into from time to time. Occasionally I find interesting deals in there. And this time I really found some terrific bargains. And we're going to talk about the pieces I got and what they are worth. So let's take a look first of all and see what I picked up. Well, let's start off with the great news, 20% off. So this is a little mid-century cat. We can tell from the style of cat when it was, this style was popular in the mid-century. Um, it's not marked, it's likely Japanese, but hard to tell. $2, 20% off. Oh yeah, coming home. This is $1.75 for a cat that is almost certainly Japanese. Uh, part of a salt and pepper set. And we've got the cork in there, which certainly helps us date the piece. Um, so it's old. Coming home with us. Let's take a look over here. This is a little tiny, I'm going to call it salt cellar. Um, rose medallion, you can see there are people. Uh, the marking tells me almost nothing, except that I'm pretty sure this is a Japanese piece. Um, and that tells me what period it dates from. These, now let me see if I can get this little bugger out. See what we've got in there? We've got a rabbit. And this is um, a type of Femil Rose, thousand flowers on the outside, rabbit on the inside, pair of salt cellars. Now, $8, but again, 20% off. Let me bring you over there. $4, 20% off. So those are both very good deals. Yes, all of this is coming home with me. So we got a couple of little cats, a black cat, a white cat, and I was quite pleased to have them because people like cats. And when they're about this big, and especially if they were salt and pepper shakers, and they've already been pre-drilled and I can just drop them on a tidbit tray if I want to, no problem. The black cat uh, was originally listed at $2, and with the discount it was $1.60. Got to admit, that's cheap. Uh, the black cat was originally listed at $1.75 with the discount. It was $1.40. So that was the least expensive item, but by only 10 cents, that I picked up in this phase of the shopping trip. Very, very glad to get those. 
and because they are so inexpensive, I don't have any problem um, with whatever I decide to do with them. If I decide I'm going to incorporate them into tidbit trays, great. If I decide I want to list them independently, at under $2, I can afford to sell them very inexpensively. But next, we have the, uh, the Rose Medallion and Famiel Rose uh, Salt Cellars. So, our Rose Medallion Salt Cellar uh, was originally $4. I got it for $3.20 and it's boxed. Uh, the Rabbit Salt Cellar Pair was originally $8. I got them for $6.40. So now that we are into one of my favorite categories, which is Chinese porcelain, we can talk about these. Salt cellars are extremely popular pieces. And whenever you can find even an individual salt cellar, you don't have any trouble selling them. In this case, they are small. I'm not sure if they were intended to be salt cellars. I've known sets like this that were intended to be little uh, wine or liquor cups, sake in particular. Um, although that's not Chinese, that's Japanese, there seems to be a, a bit of an overlap that the Chinese seem to have chosen to create these miniature teacups for Japanese wine, which is very strong, and it's their version of a shot glass. Let me just put it that way. But because these little pieces are so useful in, um, in a Western table, on a Western table, holding things like salt or the kind of condiment you might not put out in large amounts, for example, uh, wasabi or horseradish, you know, the super spicy, pasty things. They are very, very desirable. Now, the first one is a very pretty piece all on its own, but it was the second set, the little rabbit salt cellars that were particularly nice. Now, rabbits are lucky in the Chinese culture. And of course you have the year of the rabbit and I, it, it resonates with people. Um, I think there was some legend about a rabbit god that they had um, that just, it's strong in Chinese culture. So that rabbit image means a lot more to them than it does to us. For us, it's a rabbit, it's a cute little bunny, it's Easter, it's whatever. Um, and I just happen to think it's, it's an adorable little image for the inside of a small cup like that. The pattern on the outside is uh, a Famille Rose pattern. It's called a Thousand Flowers. And the Chinese had a lot of patterns like this. Um, for example, a uh, hundred babies. There are Chinese images, um, of like little children, a hundred babies. And I, I've actually seen images like that and tried to count. I usually get lost at around 60. It's a good luck symbol, uh, the, this uh, abundance. So a thousand babies is wishing, or a hundred babies rather, is wishing you a, a large and prosperous family. A thousand flowers is wishing you great abundance. So that is an, a not uncommon Famille Rose pattern. And I have a few pieces. Um, my cane uh, holder, large floor vase that I use to hold my canes and my umbrellas and whatever else is in that thousand flower pattern. So it's very nice Famille Rose pattern. Um, and in this case, those little salt cellars 
were a great buy. The idea of getting three of them for, what did I get them for? Um, uh, under $10. What you can sell these for, and this is not what I'm going to sell them for. What you can sell these for is upwards of $20 a piece. So the small one, Yes, that can go over $20. That was the one piece, the rose medallion, but the ones with the bunnies higher because it's a set of two and they came boxed. So the bargain on that should be obvious. It was probably about a third of what they could sell for. And as I say, I'm not going to sell them for that much. I'm not even sure I'm going to sell them. Oh, you know, but very very good bargain. And I want you to keep your eyes open for this because a lot of very nice Chinese export pieces of China were brought to this country in those little, um, like little silk boxes. They turn up all over the place. And absolutely have a market and they they will go for good prices salt sellers in particular um they are just incredibly popular i'm not sure why i don't know if people have changed their entertainment style and they are now serving their salt in little tiny bowls or if we have changed our entertainment styles and we are now serving things like sushi where we would want a little bowl for the soy sauce or the wasabi or the ginger but something has changed and these have become very popular lately and so you can't go wrong with a salt cellar okay next up another and this was my second least expensive item so next up let's take a look at this it's a set of salt and pepper shakers well up here i'm going to bring them down a little lower so we can see them what we have is a set of uh, appears to be plaster native american people salt and pepper shakers uh damage yes as is price is three dollars so do we have a problem with this well here we go 50 percent off everything in this booth so for a dollar fifty i can take these pieces clean them up list them for sale at what is undoubtedly going to be a very affordable price to compensate for the damage and someone who is a collector of Native American pieces might in fact be interested in spite of the condition given the fact that I can offer them at a very very attractive price. Now that set is not in great condition. I don't know if I'm going to do a project video on how to restore and repaint them or if I'm just going to take them and offer them as is. But they were a dollar fifty. That's what the cost was. So I can certainly offer them as is if somebody else wants to repaint them or I can repaint them myself as part of a project video, show you how it's done and you know what we might want to do as part of our paint choices um haven't decided yet in any case a dollar fifty is a good bargain they are little native american images uh not made by native american people these were from japan i don't know if they were marked japan i don't recall but they were certainly japanese pieces and I don't have any difficulty selling them. If I can manage to sell them at a low price because I purchased them at a very low price, well, so much the better. But I was indeed glad to get them. Next up, this was the most expensive piece I purchased, and it's one we've seen before. 
So let's. Okay, remember our goose and our golden egg. And I said if it was still here next time I came back, I would be taking it home with me. It's still here. It's coming home with me. Yes, this is the goose that laid the golden egg. And I showed this in previous videos and said that at 9.50, I was walking away from it. It was just more expensive than I was ready to pay. But there was an Easter sale in that booth, so I got it for $8.55. That is still the high end of what I would be willing to pay for a set like that. But that beautifully glazed goose was just, I mean, really, that's, that's the height of Japanese glazeware in the 1950s. The, the wonderful um, fades and color shifts, just, I love that. And of course, the little egg, which was gilded, did not have any of the usual wear on the gilding that I ordinarily expect on what would be a pepper shaker because it was smaller. And for some reason, by the way, I should throw this in. It's a digression, but I really should throw this in. I've noticed that on older salt and pepper shakers, the salt shaker is often larger and has larger or more holes in it which indicates, to me at least, that 50, 70 years ago, people were much more likely to salt their food than to pepper it. Strikes me as very odd because I don't use table salt on anything, and I do use pepper. So I look at this and I think to myself, really? People use that much salt? Boy, am I out of step. The reason I don't use salt, and I should, I should throw this out there, because I know a lot of you are getting on in years and we are seeing health impacts. My mother suffered from high blood pressure. And in fact, that was uh, her cause of death was related to her high blood pressure. Um, she had to give up salt. So, I, and I was right with her on that one because I always preferred pepper anyway. So as I was going into my teenage years, salt on the table was rather a rarity. My mother would resort to all kinds of strange little spices to, um, to give her that little perk she wanted from the salt. I just never really had much of uh, an interest in salty foods. If I want salty foods, and I do get cravings for it sometimes, it is invariably for Fanta orange soda. You're probably saying, what? Fanta orange soda has one of the highest sodium contents of any soda out there. I didn't understand what it was that was going on for me, but in a house with no salt on the table, every now and then I would get an orange soda craving. And I actually had to do my homework to find out what it was specifically about orange soda I was going for. So I just find it odd that you would have a salt shaker that's like this big and a pepper shaker like that big. But that was the way it was. So I do have that set. I'm glad I have it. I am not keeping it. It is going in my Etsy shop. I am passing that one along, mostly because... I want my buyers to be able to enjoy it too. So that finally did come home with me. Next up, more salt and pepper shakers. Well, I have no idea who these little characters are supposed to be. Um, Papa there looks fairly normal and Mama looks like she's about to fly off in that hat, just like the Flying Nun. Japan Shakers, old, $5. I think it's worth taking a chance on them. Now, the first of these salt and pepper sets is uh, a little man who is dressed rather normally 
in a little suit with a little hat. And his wife has this massive flying nun hat. I do not know what this is. So if any of you look back and say, well, you know, I, I know this from my culture because my family is from uh, the Ukraine or from Poland or whatever, and this is one of our traditional costumes, I would love to hear about it because it definitely appears to me to be a traditional costume from one of the Eastern European countries. You do see that from time to time in salt and pepper shakers. I just happen to think that they were nice pieces well executed, and that was why I got them. But as I've said before, one of the reasons I like salt and pepper shakers so much as something to buy and resell is because people collect, or even without a large collection, acquire individual salt and pepper shakers because it, it resonates with them reminds them of somewhere they've been. It depicts one of their hobbies, or um, perhaps in the case of this little couple, um, their ancestors. And salt and pepper shakers, because they are small and discreet and can be used every day, are a really nice way to throw a little spice, no pun intended, into your decor throw some whimsy in there, and people like it, and they do it. People will buy outhouse salt and pepper shakers, for example. Um, they will buy comical salt and pepper shakers, you know, silly birds or silly ducks or whatever. And it is something that will invariably sell. So the last piece up that we have is also a salt and pepper shaker set. This one is from Japan. By the way, the last set are man and woman. That was $5. This next one, also $5. So let's take a peek. Same booth, another set of mid-century Japanese salt and peppers. These have little handles, and we can usually date them, not just by the cork, but by the condition of the cork. Cork's age and checking the condition of the cork can often tell you how old a piece is. So these are indeed coming home with me too. I like that particular set because they had the little handles and because they're black. And a lot of people, um, I don't want to say decorate around a black theme because I have never walked into a home that was decorated all in black. But black is a very good accent color in a lot of rooms because it's seen as, as a grounding color. Um, I know in uh, feng shui, you're supposed to have some metal. You are supposed to have some black. This whole laundry list of things you're supposed to have in a room. But black can be a very grounding color, and you see black frequently, even in people's kitchens. Um, I'm sure we all remember when the hot appliance color was black. Everybody had black. I have a lot of black in my kitchen because Ezra the stove has black, and he has black cream and a specific shade of green, so if I want to match the stove, Cream is a hard color to match exactly, and that particular shade of sort of light mint green is hard to match exactly, but black is not hard to match. So I do have a lot of black in my kitchen. And that was the first thing that occurred to me, black salt and pepper shakers. I have no doubt there are people out there looking for that. So no problem with those. The prices ranged on this particular segment of my trip from um, $1.40 to $8.55, and that $8.55 was you know, sort of a special purpose, something that had seduced me the week before. In general, thrift store prices. So, again, pointing out to you, you can do this at the antique mall. 
It's not hard. You just need to shop carefully and know what you are looking for. So on our way out today, I want to share with you a sign that I saw on one of my local store windows. I tried to get a picture of it, but because it was a brilliant morning and the sign was behind glass because it was taped on the inside of the store window, I got nothing but glare. But I did contact the manager and said, can I please have a copy of this? So I want to share this with you. And here is the store sign. So the reason I'm throwing this out to you is, as we all know, 2020 was a tr just a terrifically bad year for small businesses. A lot of them went under. And we, we're not out of the woods yet. So what I do want to point out is, even though I know a lot of us are shopping online, and usually when we talk about shopping online, we are talking about shopping at big mega retailers. We're talking about Walmart, about Amazon, about Wayfair, about um, shop.com, huge um, national chains. Let's not forget our local stores. Um, if that's true, if two thirds of your money really does stay in your community when you purchase locally, it's something that's going to help us all out. But let's just as we move forward, be mindful of the fact that small businesses everywhere we look have had a massive impact over the last year. And if you have a choice of giving your consumer dollar to a chain store or your local store, consider giving your local store a break. All right, let's take a look at some of our pictures from Liz Brownhaven Photography on the way out. I'm not sure which ones I'm going to show you today, but so many little slideshows from her. So I will see you all tomorrow. We are going to start some giveaways tomorrow. So be sure to stay tuned. We'll see you then.